This tutorial is all about the transition elements, that group of about 30 odd elements in the centre of the periodic table that doesn't fit into the major eight groups. You need to know some of the properties of these elements. Um, you need to know that they are useful as catalysts. You need to also know that they have coloured compounds and know the colours of some of these, including these three. Uh, you've got copper here, which is or copper 2 sulphate. Um, copper 2 sulphate is blue, as are most copper compounds. The copper iron is invariably blue. We've got iron 2 and iron 3 sulphate. Now this uh, Roman numeral means the charge on the metal iron, because iron can have two ions. It can be Fe2+, or Fe3+, and Fe2+, compounds tend to be green, whereas Fe3+, tend to be orange or brown. So this is the section from the specification that the compounds of transition metals are coloured and copper are often blue, iron 2 are often light green and iron 3 are orange or brown. And we also need to know that they are used as catalysts in a couple of particular uh, instances. Learn these colours then. Copper compounds blue, iron 2 compounds light green, iron 3 compounds orange and brown and the fact that the transition metals and also transition metal compounds are often catalysts. For example, we've met iron, which is used in the Haber process, and those of you who do triple uh, will know that nickel is used in the manufacture of margarine. Now, if only all past paper questions were this easy at higher level, the compounds of transition metals are often coloured. You need to draw a straight line to match each compound to its colour. You're probably ahead of me here that the iron 3 will be orange brown, the copper sulphate will be blue, and the iron 2 sulphate will be pale green. And there lies the answer of that incredibly easy question. Here's a general question about elements in the periodic table. We've got to answer some questions uh, where each could be used once, more than once, or not at all. The name of a pale green gas here, that's going to be chlorine. An element that forms compounds of the blue is going to be copper. Name of an element with an atom with 15 protons. Well, here you don't have access to a periodic table, but I know that the one with atomic number 15 or 15 protons is going to be phosphorus. And the name of the element that's got an electronic structure of 2,5, well, that's going to be in period 2 and group 5, that one is going to be nitrogen. And there's the answers. Again, as usual on these questions, only one possible answer for each question. A reaction we need to be familiar with for the transition elements is the thermal decomposition of their carbonates. Uh, we need to know that the metal oxide and carbon dioxide are formed and that we get colour changes are for each of these, although you don't need to know the specific colour changes, you will need to be able to write word equations and balance symbol equations for each of these reactions. Thankfully, they're all pretty much identical to each other. We can do this by putting a sample of the metal carbonate here, it's nice green colour for copper carbonate, into a test tube or boiling tube and then run a delivery tube from that into a tube of lime water. Remember, lime water is the test for carbon dioxide. It turns cloudy or milky when carbon dioxide is bubbled through it. We heat up the metal carbonate and bubbles of carbon dioxide are made. Uh, the bubbles of carbon dioxide turn the lime water milky and the metal carbonate changes colour. Here, the copper carbonate would change into copper oxide, which would be black. So we'd see a colour change from green to black. We can do this for a variety of the metal uh, carbonates. Uh, in each case, what we would do is we'd heat up the transition metal carbonate and we would collect the gas into lime water. And in every case, the lime water would turn cloudy. Each of these are called thermal decomposition because they break down into two or more parts. And that's thermal decomposition for you because of the action of heat. Uh, I'm going to struggle to fit this in. So I'm going to write the carbon dioxide on top of each other. So if we've got copper 2 carbonate, uh, 
Copper carbonate is copper 2, so it's 2 plus, and carbonate is CO3 2 minus, so the formula is Cu, one of them, CO3, one of them. And that's going to make copper 2 oxide. Now, copper 2, again, as I said, is Cu2 plus. Oxygen's in group 6, so it makes a 2 minus iron, so it's a 2 plus and a 2 minus, so it's a 1 to 1, CuO. And carbon dioxide is CO2, and as you can see, that one balances quite nicely. Another example might be, for example, iron 2 carbonate, and that would make iron 2 oxide plus carbon dioxide. Iron 2 carbonate would be FeCO3, that would make FeO plus CO2. Another one might be manganese, not magnesium, manganese uh, carbonate would give manganese oxide plus carbon dioxide. As you can see, these are all very, very straightforward. You just need to learn the symbols for these carbonates, manganese carbonate MnCO3, don't get it mixed up with magnesium, which is MgCO3, uh, and that will make MnO and CO2. So as you can see, the, the formulas of each of these are very similar, so the equations are very similar. Here's a past paper question. This one very similar to the one we looked at first. The uh, iron 3 is orange-brown, the copper is going to be blue, the iron 2 is going to be light green. That's dead easy. Roy is investigating the thermal decomposition of copper carbonate. When it's heated, it makes copper oxide and carbon dioxide. A word equation, in this case, uh, is going to be that we start off with copper carbonate. And it's going to break down to make copper oxide plus carbon dioxide. There's our answers, the copper blue, the iron to uh, iron is light green, and the word equation given there. So it will allow a uh, balanced symbol equation, um, but they didn't ask for that. The first part of this question is identical. So we've got copper uh, carbonate giving copper oxide plus carbon dioxide, but the second part of the question is a little different. Here we've got that copper is a transition element. Write down one property of a compound of a transition element. Uh, it can act as a catalyst, will do. Uh, we might also say it uh, is likely to be coloured. And there's our answer, yes, it is coloured, or it's a catalyst, or its compounds give coloured precipitates. A couple more questions. Compounds of transition elements are often coloured. Iron 2 are usually green. Look at the list, it gives some colours. What colour are most copper compounds? Well, that one would be uh, blue. And what colour are most iron 3? That would be orange. Julie heats some copper carbonate, CuCO3, in the test tube. Describe what happens to the copper carbonate. Uh, it is thermally decomposed. It changes colour. It turns into copper oxide and carbon dioxide and transition elements can be used as catalysts. Uh, one is used as a catalyst in the manufacture of margarine. Which one? Well this is one you've just got to learn. It's nickel. And there's our answers. The colours for copper and iron 3 were blue and orange. Um, a couple of things about the decomposition, changes colour, 
goes green to black, decomposes, breaks down, breaks up, makes a gas or carbon dioxide is made, turns to copper oxide, or, and also the mass goes down or it uh, mass changes. And uh, we've got nickel as our compound there. Didn't include part C because that's on the part which isn't on this uh, particular uh, tutorial.